I have two things to share with you this week. The first is a new dice bag knitting pattern. The Paladin Pouch is a larger dice bag with elements inspired by heraldic motifs and knightly flair. It's worked in the round from the bottom up in two different colors of fingering white yarn. It has a peaked bottom with optional tassel that moves into a colorwork section and gets a contrasting pico cast off. This was one of the very first dice bags I ever designed when I was only just beginning to think about starting I Cast Mending. I was playing a paladin at the time and this just felt a little bit noble and just kind of fun. I just wanted to throw a bunch of things into it and see how kind of fancy I could get it to look and feel. And I am so proud of how it turned out and I am so, so excited to share it with you and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. You can find the links to download the pattern off of Ravelry and Etsy in the description below or you can check out the Patreon tiers to access it and all of my other knitting patterns. In honor of this pattern release, I thought it would be fun to make a paladin sword. Foamcraft has been of interest to me pretty much since I found out what it was. There are a lot of options when it comes to making a prop sword, but in this case, I'm gonna give it a go with a wooden dowel rod, some of those puzzle foam mats, and a willingness to learn and make mistakes just hopefully not painful ones. So let's jump on in and explore making a foam paladin sword. The first thing I needed to do was work out what I wanted the sword to look like. I sketched up some options and decided to start with the last sword that I drew. I then taped some A4 sheets together, making it the same length as the two foam squares stuck together, and drew up a template for the blade. I lightly sanded back the bumpy edge of the foam and glued the two puzzle mats together. I traced the template onto the foam, making sure that they were mirrored. Using a sharp Stanley knife, I cut both pieces out at an angle and then marked where the dowel would go between the two halves. Then it was a slow, careful process of carving out an indent for the dowel without going all the way through the sword half. Using some good old hot glue, I stuck the dowel into place and then used more shoe fix to glue the two sword halves together. I used Shoe Fix not only because it's what I had, but because it's flexible when it dries and it's designed to be used with foam. I used my Dremel with a sanding drum attachment to shape the sword to my liking. I cannot recommend this tool highly enough for this. It works incredibly well. Just be very careful, especially at any points on your foam because you can get a bit of kickback. With the blade shape to my liking, I moved on to the guard cutting out three of the same shape and then cutting down one to poke out on either side of the dowel. My camera died during the gluing, but I stuck the two halves to both of the whole pieces to give extra thickness while still being able to slide it onto the dowel.
I went in with a Dremel to ensure a better fit with the blade and once happy with the fit, started shaping the guard. All the edges, holes, and imperfections were sealed with silicon filler. To prep for painting, the foam was first sealed with two coats of Plasti Dip before being sprayed with two different tones of silver. One tone for the blade and another for the guard and pommel. Speaking of the pommel, I liked how the guard turned out, so I chose to use the ends as my pommel template, this time only cutting two layers. With the paint mostly dry on the blade and guard, I stuck them together using the shoe fix glue and then marked how long I wanted the grip to be, adding about one centimeter to the end to be able to glue on the pommel. I used black acrylic paint to dry brush on some shading, and then a darker silver to add some subtle markings. This is by no means a sleek build, so I used brown acrylic paint to add to the battered look of the sword. I used batting to add shape to the grip. This honestly ended up being a little too soft, and next time I would use something a little bit more robust. I opted to stitch it into place for added control, but you could probably just glue it in if you don't like hand sewing. I glued a scrap of suede over the batting and added gold wire and trim for decoration and shaping. Finally, I used watered down acrylics to add weathering to the grip, trying to keep in mind where the dirt would naturally collect.
I am thrilled with my first attempts at making a foam sword. Is it perfect? Not at all. But I'm glad that I finally tried it and I learned so much that even with its bumps and dents and rough bits, I'm really proud of the journey it took to make it. And I still have three more sword sketches and a ton of blank wall space that I can fill these amazingly lightweight builds with. Now, some of the issues. If you have time and money to get the longer sheets of EVA foam, do it. You can still kind of see the puzzle marks on the blade, and the textured side is really hard to sand down and can create weird edges if you're not careful. It sort of added this serrated effect to the side of the blade, which I'm not in love with. The silicon filler that I used was also not ideal at all. The Plasti Dip didn't really want to stick to it, which caused problems after painting. I know there's a product called Quick Seal that apparently works quite well, but I was just using what was in my dad's shed. The silicon filler also meant that the paint didn't dry as quickly, so it ended up peeling off in places when I had to head back home from my parents' house, which was a real bummer but I ended up just trying to paint the bits to sort of look like normal dents and it doesn't bother me too much. On a positive note, I found using a Dremel so helpful. You can sand things into the shape you want quickly and it's incredibly helpful for getting all of your pieces to fit together snugly. It's probably the number one tool I recommend if you're considering making your own foam weapon or build. I thought it was going to be labor intensive to have to sand down everything but it goes so quickly and you don't even burn through the bits like you would with something like wood. Also finding a rubber cement-esque glue which for me was the shoe fix was also incredibly helpful. It dried quickly, held things together really well and it didn't get in the way of sanding. That is it for the making of the paladin sword. I cannot wait to make a holder for this so I can fit it on my belt and hang both the pouch and the sword off of my belt. Again, you can find the links for this pattern in the description. And of course, if you like this video, you can check out my other videos. And if you really like this video, you can feel free to subscribe. I hope you have a lovely week. Bye.